board here. When are you? Call the meeting order. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's date, March 8th, 2018. We moved up our, originally we were set to start at 10. We moved up our meeting in order to accommodate a speaking engagement at 11.45 that we have to go to. Uh, remind you, this is a public meeting. It is being recorded. Um, we will uh, break from our regular agenda at 10 o'clock uh, to go into hearing mode. Uh, do we have any awards, recognition, or correspondence? I would gather from the silence no, we sorry. don't. <laughs> All right. Um, minutes of a previous meeting, February 7th, 2018. Mr. Chair, move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Additions to the agenda. I have none. What? None? No. All right. Uh, is there any public input from someone in the audience other than those who are scheduled to participate? Uh, with later items. All right, we'll go into our business. We are going to move past uh, item number one uh, because we are legally scheduled to begin that at 10 o'clock. Which brings us to EOTEC, item number two, a, a historic item. Council? Okay. Yes, before the board are a number of documents to uh, accomplish the termination of the intergovernmental agreement for the EOTEC authority and also to transfer the interest that the county has in the property and to do a new lease for the fairgrounds. Uh, previously in January, the board gave its intention to transfer any interest it had in the EOTEC facility to the city of Hermiston and during that period of time, uh, staff have met with representatives from the city to accomplish the documents along with Commissioner Gibbons and um, those documents are pretty much complete. There's one provision yet in the lease that needs to be clarified with um, a couple of people and then also still left to be finalized is the agreement for the use of personal property between the city and the county. But otherwise, the documents are ready for the board to consider and adopt if desired. The uh, personal property lease looked, uh, I did see okay. that, it looked pretty complete. Okay. The, all the, oh, the list is certainly thorough. <laughs> yes, the list is available now, so I just need to get the uh, terms of that confirmed with the fair board, and then so that way the city can review it. Okay. All right, we have uh, Byron Smith, the city manager of uh, Hermiston. Byron, did you want to say anything? Byron Smith, city of Hermiston. Um, just appreciate all of the cooperation and work that we've done uh, on these agreements. And uh, the city council will be scheduled to consider these same uh, documents on, on Monday evening at our regular city council meeting. The only comment I would make is uh, a thank you to you, Byron, uh, for the leadership on the EOTech board. And as we've worked together, uh, it's it's been great. Thank so, you. Good luck going forward. Thank you. With that, Mr. Chair, I would move approval. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Do you want to say that? Okay. Uh, yes, it's an order plus the approval of all of the documents. Okay, for the record, BCC uh, Resolution 208, 2018-018. Okay. Yes. Do we need to vote on anything other than just acknowledge that? That it's the order and then also approve of all of the documents. Okay. So did we need two? two it, no, it could be all in one, but okay. I mean, that was part okay. of that. Well, okay. acknowledge that all of those. Yeah. Are, are, are in the record. Uh, okay. We have discussed them at length. <laughs> uh, okay. Item number three, Hermiston Enterprise Zone Payment.
this is coming before the board for approval for an agreement regarding some payments the county is scheduled to receive because of the long-term enterprise zone agreement with Lamb West and uh, under the terms of that agreement the county will be receiving payments of 500000 per year and the proposal is to pass those payments of 500000 to the city of Hermiston for four years so that they can accomplish some improvements on their water system and to accommodate um, some housing development. Mr. Chair, I haven't run the numbers on that, but I would expect that this improvement in the water system will probably amount to construction of housing that will uh, replace the funding actually for these for these first four years uh, in the long in the long haul. I'm very supportive of it. I've heard numbers of six to eight hundred. I think the key thing, the key thing, and this is what we've talked about all along, is that when uh, significant events of this type happen in a community, uh, our hope is to be able to reinvest the proceeds back into that community to, to promote further growth. So I think this and that's been our way. general practice. So I know. Did so. uh, Byron want to speak to that at all? Uh, Byron, would you like to speak again? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well, <laughs> since you drove over. <laughs> yeah. Byron Smith, City of Hermiston. Uh, yes, the uh, We've already moved. We're moving forward with the design of this uh, water system improvement, and uh, we uh, there are around 300 lots that are already platted. We think that, like uh, the commissioner mentioned, that it will be hopefully uh, affect positively in the six to 800 lot range, depending on what kind of development happens, and uh, also would potentially impact uh, the construction of a new school that would be in that same area. So. We're really excited about being able to uh, do this and really appreciate the county's partnership on this project. Well, just as you did with EOTech, we hope you'll make occasional visits to share the, the ongoing progress. Okay, we can do that. Okay, right, thank thanks. you. With that, Mr. Chair, I'd move approval. Second. Then move and second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Item four, vehicle purchase. Doug, did you notice that I am not signing the major ones? Yes. Well, I, I can't very do that and this. A little more than I can handle and the medium. <laughs> you don't have to manage okay. it. <laughs> so we'll do that after. And if I need to get you some water or something, let me know. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the coffee. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. So I think for you, um, well, I, I do, definitely I need to stay with him. Yeah, um, Kim Liza Blue, Program Manager for the CDP. Um, the first thing I'm here before you guys for is to request to go out for RFP for four to five new vehicles. The, um, these new vehicles will be used by our service coordinator, our <coughs> abuse investigator, our eligibility specialist. Um, currently, we have carryover money we need to get spent by the end of 2000, uh, June 30th, 2019. Three of these vehicles were budgeted into that carryover money. Two of the vehicles, if we get um, if we get the entire five, were already budgeted in our current budget um, the, for the money that we are getting in today. None of this money is general fund. Great. <laughs> And if you don't use the funding, it's one of those budgets that if you, you use it or lose it? Yep. We will have to write back check right back to the state. That's not a good scenario. DD under county management, DD started with a rather questionable fleet of vehicles. This is kind of a step forward. Mr. Chair, move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And this, you're also item five, Kim. Kim White, the Police Program Manager, CDP. Um, the other thing I'm here for is to ask for um, permission to purchase a digital whiteboard, not to exceed $7,000. With the 
carryover money. We had a substantial amount of carryover money. Um, and with the plan that we sent to the state that they approved, I had budgeted $40,000 for technical, technology, um, and other upgrades to our facility and our um, communication devices so we could decrease the amount of travel that we're doing to Salem and throughout the state. Um, we believe our facility can be repurposed to actually be a suitable meeting room to have regional meetings, which would really um, cut our travel cost as well as being good partners with our um, regional CDPs. So that money, again, is not general fund. Um, I have worked with IT, um, down on ice here um, to see what the best digital whiteboard with digital um, whiteboard would be. There's a lot of them out there, so I defer to um, IT to make this decision. This board will work with all of our Google apps and um, the technologies that the county's using. Kim, for those of us who are allegedly did, uh, technology challenged, <laughs> uh, could you explain what a digital whiteboard is and how it works? So a digital whiteboard is, in this case, is a 55-inch screen that functions as a whiteboard. You can write on it. Um, it will save documents. Um, it will save your work as you do it. Um, if you've heard of the Promethean boards that the schools have, where the teachers can write on it, print the stuff out, it's, it's very similar. And you can do that from your computer, Bill. Really? Or your laptop. Am I supposed to have one of those? <laughs> 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 There's a picture of it. <laughs> There's a picture. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Yeah. There are the cars that drive themselves. Yeah. Mr. Chair, move approval. <laughs> Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Item number six, administrative policy. Good morning, Mr. Lanai. Good morning, Commissioners. Dan Lanai with Administrative Services. He's here. Last week, we, yes, we unveiled our new security <coughs> policy handbook for all county employees, with the exception, a little bit difference at the Sheriff's Office because they're a 24 hour facility. The jail runs a little different, so they won't quite. But all the regular staff at all of our building, other buildings <clears throat> now are equipped with policies and procedures of what to do in the case of a hostage situation, a bomb threat, active shooter, there we go, thank you, active shooter, earthquake, and fire evacuations, and suspicious material sent in the mail. And the flip chart, as they can go through, allows them to read through these. We suggest they do this ahead of time, read through it. But in a sense of a bomb threat, they actually have, right here, they can flip to the back, and while they have the caller on the line, what to do, what kind of questions to ask while that person is on the line, which is a key aid in helping the police either identify where this bomb is, and number two, try to find where this person is so they don't do this again to some other facility or, or place. As a safety being a top priority with the county, we have put this together and want to make it a county policy for that people need to utilize this, read this, and pass this out. So we're before you today to make this policy for county employees. Okay, Matt, we've had a number of incidents. One, we've had a number of bomb threats. Uh, we've had fire alarms go off and we had some folks scattered. Uh, I've debriefed because of the courthouse safety issues with the safety staff, with our sheriff's department, on how to better uh, equip staff. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, training exercises as we move forward on this process. Uh, we have had su suspicious uh, <coughs> materials sent through the mail, uh, albeit they were benign and not created a problem other, other than shutting the courthouse down for four hours. But uh, uh, this is something that has really been forefront for myself to make sure that the, the courthouse and the staff and the citizens coming into the courthouse are safe. 
and we have some procedures in place to protect people and they know what to do. So with that, uh, I would move approval. Just one quick question. These have been distributed to all county offices? At the senior manager meeting that we had last week, we distributed them all to all the senior managers to educate their managers and give them out to their employees. Their task was to do that plus have their employees set up by each of their phones. So it's now been distributed to the senior managers. At that meeting, we told them shortly we'll be scheduling fire drills at all the facilities except with the, uh, the jail and dispatch. That's something that I think they already do on a regular basis and have that figured out, that they handle things differently because of the 24-hour uh, facilities. So they're aware, they have them, they're supposed to be getting them to their employees' hands. We're probably planning right after the first of the month, after Easter there, that beginning of April, to do a uh, fire evacuation drill here at the courthouse. We need to conduct those bi-annually, and we haven't been, and we're trying to get that done at each of the facilities, to all of our other places. So this will be step one here, and um, they have been warned that they need to be educated on this because we're going to be testing them. And one way to get people to learn when there's an emergency, a lot of times you're not going to look at things. The only way to make you be able to know what to do is to do it by habit, by training people. That. So we want to start training people. Also, is in the works of trying to get the, um, I think it's the SARS training for the uh, active shooter. Trying to get that as a mandatory thing for most of our, for all of our employees, so that they start to learn and know what to do when there's an active shooter. So we're we're actively working on trying to promote safety and getting our people trained and uh, training them so that it'll become a habit when there is this. If and this situation ever arises. Is that Mr. Chair, I second the motion. Before we vote, uh, so you know, Dan was the keynote speaker at our senior manager's meeting with his presentation. One of the things that, one of the challenges they're working on in terms of a, a drill or a series of drills is the fact that it, a court could well be in session. And, and we need to make it as realistically as possible but they're trying to work around. Uh, we obviously, we're, if we are in the midst of a murder trial, it might not be the best time to have a drill. So they're, they want to make it realistic, but they also want to remember the problems associated with courts. So, And the other part of this whole total program is the revamping of the front, front entrance and limiting building access so that there's better security for folks coming in. Correct. Right. There's, uh, I think a lot of employees, I agree with you that uh, getting that accomplished will make them feel safer. Okay. Good. With that, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Item 7, uh, Athena Bridge Agreement. Amendment. Agreement. Um, Tom Fellows wasn't able to be here today, but he is supportive of, the, of this agreement. Uh, this is part of the City of Athena bridge replacement, and the Matilda Basin Watershed Council and the uh, Confederated Tribes have been working to study and conduct uh, surveys to figure out the best way to address problems at the bridge regarding fish passage, and um, they have come up with the solution is to replace the bridge. They have obtained funding to do so, and now they're before both the city of Athena and the county to document the county and the city's approval of the project. Uh, the county contribution to the project is basically to provide dump trucks and assist in the removal of the bridge. Other than that, the funding will be done by non-county contributions. And um, at the end of the new construction of the new bridge, the bridge will be owned by the city of Athena. So that's the one by the park, right? Yes. Not very big. The, the maintenance cost will be there, isn't that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, it is. It's kind of hard to tell it's a bridge. Yeah. Okay. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'd move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. 
Item 8, Lloyd Lane, LID. Matt Kenny, Utila County Public Works. So, um, last time we met about the Lloyd, Rain, Lloyd Road LID, um, you guys recommended that we go ahead and send it out to vote for all the local property owners after that we kind of assess the, the, the cost um, estimate and report that we're prepared. So we sent that to all uh, 25 affected property owners. Um, the mailings contained an instructional letter, a uh, copy of the report, including the cost estimate, and a ballot asking the voters to vote either for or against the proposed LID. Um, these results, along with any comments received from the landowners, uh, were further, further detailed in the report that, that I prepared. And um, at this time, we've got 52% of the 25 landowners um, voting against the LID. And so that that meets and exceeds the statutory requirement, um, 371, uh, 630, that requires 50% objections. Um, so at this point in time, uh, we're just bringing it before the board um, and recommending that the proposed Lloyd Road LID be declared abandoned at this point. In the past, Matt, we have gone in LIDs at least a 60% approval to accept that with the landowners because it still left a fair number that just didn't want to be faced with the cost. Right. And, yeah. and that was a major concern in this, this scenario. Most of the um, negative feedback we got was because of the cost, uh, right. among other things. But, yeah. So, Based on the statute, if it exceeds 50%, the board must declare it abandoned. They can't be moved forward. So that's the reason for the recommendation. Mr. Chair, sure. move adoption of order RD 2018 2. I would second that. Favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt, for your work on that. Yes. I, you are still working on McKinney Road issue? Um, yeah, we've. Um, I've actually had a phone call just yesterday from a property owner. I'm going to get back to him. And um, I'm kind of, you know, I've prepared some, some research. I think that Tom um, forwarded that on to you at one point in time. And I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of at a point now where, um, I guess, between you and or the owners um, need further direction, I guess, at this point on, on where we need to go with that. But, okay. Um, I will maybe sit down with with you also okay. and find out I know those folks we've got the combination of public and combination of private that really complicates the whole process yeah and, and being that it's a public road that's been there for you know by prescriptive use it's, it, it would meet um, any requirements say we were to do a legalization or something on it we did it would def definitely be a candidate for that okay uh, but it'd have to be declared a, a public road first mm -hmm. before we can even consider that. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're, we voted already, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Item number nine, bond refunding. Okay. This is coming before the board for approval of refunding of the special work public works uh, fund loan back in 2009. The county obtained a special public works loan, fund loan, to help with the construction costs for the construction of the detoxification facility. Uh, due to re uh, possible reduction in interest rates, the matters before the board for refunding of that. Um, this is at the request, uh, the suggestion of the state of Oregon, and they have uh, prepared the documents and they're before the board for approval. So, a question I have regarding that, Doug, how does that affect uh, Eastern Oregon uh, Alcohol Foundations? The uh, payments on it will, uh, at this point, that are being made on the loan, uh, we just receive each year and pass it on. So, it'll just be the exact same thing. Okay. Mr. Chair, we'll approval of or that we adopt order BCC 2018-020. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Item number 10, restoration plan.
this is before the board for approval. This is a three-year implementation plan for restoring two positions in the Human Resources Office to their previous uh, ranges. Uh, it was reduced uh, previously due to the budget and to allow for additional staffing. And so now it's before the board for approval of the plan to restore them to their previous ranges. Is there any negative budget impact on this? Well, there, yes, there's additional costs to do that. Okay. I would speak in favor of this. I, uh, Matt was, Jennifer, regarding this, uh, I'm aware of where they have been over the years. Uh, I'm aware of where we, we, how we reduced it, but I also recommended to her that uh, we would not choose, I would not recommend that we restore it all in a single year, okay. but that it be spaced out over, as you can see in the, in the proposed action. Uh, 2000, July 1st of 2018, 2019, and 2020. So it's it's spaced out, <coughs> and that minimizes the budget impact. Is there a motion? I would move approval, Mr. Chair. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Item 11: LCAC appointments. There, uh, this is before the board for approval of five uh, individuals appointment to the local community advisory council. Uh, I think most of these have been active, um, but they have now filed applications to be formally appointed to the council. Right. Um, Jim Setzer, the director of public health, brought these to me and uh, asked that we take this action to make it official. There will be additional appointments in the future, but at this point there are five available for right. Have there been people in that position before? Um, or two of these are county employees, fairly new county employees, so they will, because of that, they're now active. Um, the one is with, uh, is a um, uh, OHP uh, user, so uh, that person is uh, desirable to be on the board for <coughs> input. And the other two, I think, are also updates in personnel at different uh, partners. The primary criteria for uh, participation is interest and willingness. Uh, it isn't. Is this a board, though, that we've had before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah the LCAC board. Just board. replenishing people on it. The LCAC board yeah. is, what do you call it? Is amorphous the right word? I can't well, remember. Well, yeah, it's part of the, yes, it's in part of the CCO changes. And so it's been in place for... I want to say three years. But to my knowledge, there's no limitation no, with regard to membership. Number numbers. membership. They now have our term limit. They now have terms before they were appointed for life. Now they're there for <laughs> three years. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, I'd move approval of the adoption of BCC 2018-019. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. AOC payable, item 12. This is for our dues and related costs. And this is before the board because of the dollar amount. Um, there are some voluntary portions for payment on the, this payable. I wasn't sure if you needed any discussion on that. Otherwise, the total amount due is um, in a small figure there, $23,256.95. Do we want to take a look at the different categories that total covers? Uh, we've got the different forest programs. I, I could. You want me to read those? Uh, it, it does. I know what they are, but it doesn't. Right. Yeah. There's the the general fund dues. Do you split out some costs on those? I don't believe. On this portion. Do you want me to do that, Doug? Sure. Okay. The, the AOC general fund dues and the public lands fund dues uh, are not a voluntary contribution. I mean, it's voluntary, uh, we can vote yes or no not to join AOC, but if we choose to join AOC, those are not uh, voluntary. And that is uh, roughly 18,000 of the 23,000. Um, the video lottery defense fund dues are voluntary in the amount of 878. As you'll recall, 
Uh, there was legislation before, uh, before the legislature this year, I don't remember if it passed or not, but it dealt with the fact passed. that it passed. But they, they're the reason we've been doing this is because um, they're required to, uh, there's a word that escapes me, but share revenue. make us whole. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, what they have done is when the, when the revenues aren't what they projected, they have withheld it. But when they were more than they projected, they have not given it to us. And so that money has been used to to uh, deal with that issue in order to get us to where we are, where we will be made whole. And there essentially has always been a run on those lottery dollars oh, yes. by other uh, entities. Right. Or some other development. Yeah, it's, it's for what we, I think for what we invest in in trying to to get make it right, it's, it's worth it. The uh, next one is the Federal Land Management Subcommittee dues. One of you will, 715, one of you will have to speak to that. Uh, that particular group is the one that uh, we use those dollars to lobby for how our federal lands are managed. Uh, part of that is being addressed through uh, the Blue Mountain Forest Plan, the East Side Forestry Bill, uh, and how we manage to have a voice at the federal level on those projects and programs. And, and of course, I sit on the Blue Mountain Forest Plan uh, Steering Committee and uh, our federal lands east side forest bill. Uh, it's not always what, it, what we want it to be. Uh, it's a long process. And as we all know, when we come up with a plan, <coughs> It faces litigation of, of some type, and all it takes is somebody filing a, uh, an appeal, and, and that sets you back. But uh, I, would, I would certainly think we need to be pretty, continued. Pretty necessary. Yes. Pretty necessary. The next one is the PERS Employees Retirement System Alliance dues uh, are continuing, though, frustrating efforts to, to bring PERS into alignment, but uh, I, I think we need, we must continue to to keep pressure on and address the PERS issue. Uh, we just simply can't go forward without a resolution. Uh, 1667. But I, I think it's an investment in trying to control PERS, and, and I think we've got to continue doing that. I, I agree with that. All right, and the final one is veterans fund dues, and obviously I have a direct interest in that because veterans are part of my beta look and I'm on the veterans committee as you know uh, veterans in my estimation our veterans <coughs> committee at AOC is probably one of the the most active and the most successful they've developed a remarkable relationship with the state uh, they're recognized on the national level uh, for their their work um, in our county we have uh, now been able to expand our veteran staff uh, and as a result in the last three years uh, that, that has resulted in bringing several million dollars worth of additional benefits to veterans uh, in Umatilla County who serve the country and those are ongoing. Uh, if you remember not very long ago uh, we, we honored a Korean War veteran here uh, who was just, I think, a, uh, an excellent example of the work our group's doing uh, to help provide those people uh, with with the benefits they're entitled to. And the cost of that is? Uh, $2,102.64. That really isn't a, a contribution to, uh, to form pursuing uh, legal issues. That actually is the the money that supports the the veterans program at AOC, so it's it's different. It supports Andy Smith, who's a program manager, and actually the operation of, of AOC's veterans activities. So really, the only <clears throat> the only fund that we have uh, that we might not get very much value out of is the public lands fund dues, which are part of the Secure Rural Schools Act. We're not involved in that, but it's a mandatory part of our dues. So. Yeah. And, and actually, Bill, we are involved to a small, to, small uh, the SRS is a, a part of that, but also the uh, PERS dollars, uh, PERS, I mean, built dollars, uh, payment in lieu of taxes. And uh, 
we have lobbied for years to have that program be whole. And so with that being said, I, I wasn't opposed to any of these. However, I wanted it discussed so that we also have a knowledge of what we're paying for and it's on the record and public knows what we're paying for also. Well, I think with any organization of this type, it should not be a rubber stamp. We should look at I, I appreciate the fact you asked me to go all the way through it because I think we should review it in depth every year. So, Mr. Chair, move the approval of payment of the dues to the Association of Oregon Counties for 2018. Second. In favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, commissioner reports. Well, I'll start out first, as you well know, the uh, trip back to Washington, D.C., which was supposed to be helping lobby on some of those issues we just discussed, was an absolute disaster. Uh, I never made it to D.C. I got waylaid in Chicago, and which was not a lot of fun, but managed to survive that. Uh, although I will say my luggage made it to D.C. I couldn't. But, uh, they did finally get it to me the following week. So uh, we didn't accomplish anything in that stead. But I did have a chance to meet with uh, Congressman Walden and discuss some of the issues with our federal land, Blue Mountain Forest Plan, and the water issues in the west end of, of our county. Uh, when uh, the congressman and myself toured the uh, uh, Walmart distribution center in Hermiston, uh, it's been a week ago now. So we did make some progress there. So uh, with that, we're continuing to work on some water issues. Uh, the state, uh, I don't know if both of you know, the state had put forth the the uh, policy option package for the uh, new staff to help with uh, uh, water issues throughout the county, especially in the new management intensive water management area up in the Milton Freewater uh, region. That policy option package did not get any funding at the state level. So we're back to square one on that. and. That was uh, one of the big issues that uh, we'll be working on. You do win first prize for the most exciting trip. Yes, I, I, I got to Pasco, Commissioner Alfred got to Portland, and you got to Chicago. So. Yeah, I was uh, flying out of Portland directly uh, from the uh, uh, City County Insurance Services Convention, and, uh, which, by the way, went, went quite well. The convention and board board of trustees meeting, the uh, the rates that we are going to see are going to be very favorable compared to what was expected. Uh, I can share that Robert with you later today. I've got the booklet that I didn't bring to to work with me today, but I've got that booklet to be able to share those things. But I was I was going to drive or to Portland from there. My wife was flying home on boutique, which she did. I got to the counter and he said, your flight's canceled due to weather. So I drove home, got home about an hour and a half after she did. So it worked out okay. Uh, but I didn't get there to Washington and I, I was fully hoping to, to, as a representative of the Columbia Development Authority Board, to be able to continue the uh, uh, work with the uh, Base Realignment and Closure Committee. Uh, uh, to encourage them to move that process quicker than it has been moving. There are only a few small details that have existed since uh, the, in the past 28 years that they haven't gotten taken care of yet. And uh, those shouldn't take long. I'm still expecting within my, within my, uh, my term to see that process completed and that the depot would be in our hands. There, there is a delegation from that board, uh, of which we are a partner, uh, to Washington, D.C. coming up next week, and they expect to, uh, again, encourage the BRAC committee and do some lobbying in the, on the Hill, which I also fully expected to do. Other than that, I attended the port meeting, Port of Umatilla, yesterday. Uh, 
they, there were several persons there. Uh, one of the presentations was regarding the, the data technician training by Blue Mountain and, and their request for support from the port on that. And I expect we will probably hear a similar request. It's very important to economic development that we get those data technicians trained because we do have a rather significant contribution being made to our economy down in the, uh, in the West End with the uh, 12 data centers that are being built. They need people to work in them. People need to work so they can buy houses. They need to buy houses so they can pay taxes to Umatilla County. So it's all a continuous circuit. I uh, expect we'll see something on that uh, very, very, very soon. So, good meeting there, and uh, it's good to be here. <clears throat> well, I read this morning that 2,000 people did manage, county officials did manage to make it to the legislative conference in Washington, D.C., but the federal government is wandering along at the moment without guidance from Umatilla County. So, yeah. The good thing is... But 2,000 other people are guiding them. That they're so. fully refunding all the registration fees. Yes, that's... Uh, oh, do note that I suggested to NACO in an email that I was frustrated they hadn't put anything on their website. Uh, I wrote to the executive director and two hours later there was all kinds of stuff on the website about the weather and the cancellation. I had wondered if it had gone unnoticed. Uh, but they had 70 mile an hour winds, which is, I learned, is four miles short of hurricane force. So I believe they're still having nasty weather there. Yeah, yeah. we did have Oregon delegates scattered from from Oregon to San Francisco and L.A. and Atlanta and Denver and every other place. <coughs> did any of them make it? Some did, some did not. Uh, the BOPTA board has met and adjourned for the year. Do know that, and our budget process continues, and the cherry blossoms blew off the trees. <laughs> so uh, we have about three minutes, uh, so we'll take a brief recess until 10 o'clock. Okay. Quality leadership. Oh, so that's what it is. So you want something to do for a while? Oh, yeah. You're right. I signed some of those, Doug. Didn't we sign all of those? You, I didn't. You didn't? Okay. Oh, I did some, but some of those were a little bit monumental in terms of okay. trying I, to... I think I, I hit all of them. Trying to pay attention and... Kind of keeps Doug busy seeing where I didn't sign. Good Lord. <laughs> I don't think you signed these. Oh, did I miss one? No, Larry. <coughs> this one is.
Right. Some kind of adjustment. Unit. It's just an adjustment up or down, I think. It looks like it fell out of something. I hope it's not our chairs. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder if there was one. If you notice anywhere I missed, will you holler? Just adjust up to stabilize. We'll reconvene and go into hearing mode. Uh, we'll call first on uh, Carol. Would you please come to the podium and identify yourself? Thank you, Commissioner. I am Carol Johnson and I'm from the planning department. And as you recall, we've had a hearing, a land use hearing. On a rezone for 3R Bell, uh, representing uh, Kent Madison and, and uh, his uh, attorney, uh, Robert Anderson. And uh, that hearing was continued to today. And uh, the record was closed, so any new uh, information, uh, the record will have to be open to accept that. I'm assuming that is your desire. And uh, I have some information to share with you if, uh, if that is it. Again, uh, as a reminder, this is uh, uh, land that is currently EFU zone, and the request is to change the, the agricultural designation to commercial as well as change the zone from exclusive farm use to rural retail service commercial. So with that, I will turn it over to your your desire to continue and, and how you choose to leave that. Okay, we may, are there questions now of, of Carol? Uh, no, not of Carol. I, I do have questions, Doug. I forwarded a document to you. Yes. Uh, and I need some clarification on, since we continued it, we, we closed written, yes. could close the written record? Yes. Um, if the board may recall at the conclusion of the last uh, portion of the hearing, uh, the board wanted some type of direction provided to the applicants where there were deficiencies in the application. And uh, Carol Johnson did that. She provided that to uh, directly to the applicant or his uh, attorney. I think I cc'd uh, you and uh, several other schools. Okay. And so uh, that uh, uh, provided some guidance on what the deficiency were and the lack of uh, information or evidence to support it. Um, since then, uh, there has been additional written testimony offered. Uh, that was the email that was sent directly to the board. Uh, at this point, the record has been closed, so it really cannot be accepted without the hearing the record be reopened. I would think uh, based on the direction of the board the last one, I think that sort of implied that you wanted some additional evidence because there are other deficiencies. So probably the board probably would want to reopen the record to allow for this written uh, documentation. There's some other stuff that could also be submitted. Um, there have also been draft findings provided uh, by the applicant's attorney. Uh, there are still some, particularly one criteria that has not been addressed in the finding or the record. And um, so I think the board would probably want to hear something further on that anyway. Um, but at this point, if you want to reopen the record, you can do so. Uh, you can limit the record to just written documentation if you want to. And then the other option to uh, open to you is to continue to a further date to allow for um, some of the missing information or uh, uh, documentation being provided. My understanding that that there are two, two major issues before us. One is the decision to open the record to written communication to uh, put put into the record uh, the, the materials that were sent to the commissioners this week. And, and that would require a motion from the from the commission to open the record to allow that written testimony. We'll deal with that first. 
Okay, Mr. Chair, I would move that we open the record. I, I think it behooves us to be able to look at all the possibilities. Part of the discussion in the last uh, beginning of the hearing was the fact that we had basically an unusable piece of ground that created a problem uh, too small to be economically uh, worthwhile as, as ag land and, and some of the hindrances related to that. So with that, I would move to reopen that. To that written document? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Yes, I second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> I, I keep looking at legal counsel. <laughs> I, I understand the other question is if we decide to take action today, uh, we would be somewhat limited in the action we could take based on the fact that the one remaining piece that is out there is dealt deals with the availability of other sites along the freeway. And so we theoretically, could, I don't know how they vote, theoretically could vote yesterday, today, vote today uh, to deny the application or we could continue and provide the applicant uh, the opportunity to address that yes. issue. And I think, I don't know, there might be some other issues that the planning staff has, but that, that, that is a major missing component of the application. And without it, the really can't be moved forward. But if, if it's continued, it gives an opportunity to further meet that criteria. Yes. And answer questions pertaining to it or fill us in on the details of it. I guess there is one clarification on your motion. Was that just to reopen the record to written, written overall or just that one piece of written, just that one document? Does that limit them on the new if we yeah, just... I mean, basically at this point you just submitted the one piece into the record and that's it. I mean, you can... That'd be fine, but if you want to continue it, you'll have to do it again to accept additional written documentation. And they're going to have to submit that to meet that other criteria. <laughs> yeah, so, so... So I don't know if you want to just flat reopen the record to any further written document, written evidence, or just for that one piece of this. Would you say we could we could make that decision if we continued we could make that decision at that time yes. in the continuance to allow yes. additional yes. Well it would be implied, would it not? I would think so, yes. I mean if we're asking yes. <laughs> if we're asking for additional comment uh, from the applicant would imply we're going to accept it. Yes. So that's I want to make sure that if you want to clarify that motion to basically reopen the record to any because there are opponents in this uh, application, so they, they might also want to address further objections to that's, what is submitted. That's fine. So and then I would clarify that motion to simply reopen the record. Second. Okay, I'm going to say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right, now. <laughs> Council. <laughs> well, I think part of it is maybe you want to hear from the applicant's attorney. Oh, oh, may, may, I, also. Um, may I also provide something into the record? This basically is exactly the same thing you received uh, emailed directly to you. It has had some staff comments that were also provided in certain sections. They are in bold and italics. And... Uh, So in addition to that, uh, here are just some, some summaries of uh, the goal exception and some of the rules that we have to look at for the uses. Okay. Uh, real quick question uh, for council. We'll need to enter these as we've received them. Yes. So, so with, with that, um, 
the, I think you had 14 uh, exhibits, so uh, number 15 would probably be the applicant's rebuttal testimony. So this would be number 15. And then number 16 is the goal exception rebuttal testimony with the county responses to it. Okay. And then 17 would be the uh, goal exception. Okay, Mr. Chair, I would move that those items would be entered into the record. Item 15, 16, and 17. Is there a second? second? All in favor say aye. 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 Which is 17? This is 17. What was, what was 16? Now let's see. This is the fifth. That's 16 there. And then there's 15. Is it? Is 15 the email? Right, it's the yeah. applicant's rebuttal testimony. Yeah. What's, what's 17? 17 is the goal exception. Want me to restate state those for clarity? Maybe you didn't get it, but it is okay. 16 really includes what 15 is. Oh, okay. So gotcha. if you read okay. that, you'll get it all. Should I restate those for clarity so we have it on the record? Okay, I would, that motion would include Exhibit 15, which is the applicant's rebuttal. Uh, exhibit 16 is the same information, but some explanation uh, entered by uh, the county planning staff. And 17 is the uh, OAR uh, an explanation of the Oregon administrative rules relating to this application. Okay. You, uh, Mr. Second, do you accept that? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right, now, Doug, what? I didn't know if you wanted to hear from the applicant's attorney to further clarify what you want to do next. With, in response to what we think we want to do next. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, did, we, we don't want to go all the way back through it, but we'd like your res your response to what we're thinking we're going to do. Hi, I'm Molly Anderson. Um, I am an for the applicant. Um, so the question is, you know, what is the goal exception? And for us to provide additional information in response to planning's uh, points and the open question of the, the uses located on the property, or whether you are going to decide today, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, our preference would be to have the opportunity to respond if that's something that you're going to bring us. Okay, and, and we've made that move forward to give you that opportunity okay. so right otherwise the uh, yeah no, vote the inclination would be to to act based on that the fact we don't have the the necessary information to provide approval so right um, so, yes. i don't give it that much of a choice <laughs> uh -huh. so okay anything okay. else you want to add no all right fine. okay i will accept the motion i would move that we continue this until we've got a well, you we want need to set a date. You need to set a date. Can we go 60 days? That's a hard. We're going to be swamped. What? With meetings. No, I'm taking it past the budget. Oh, okay. I took it up. Took it 30 days as the budget, right, Robert? And so I'd rather go to meeting on May second. I hate to delay it, but but we no, that would be into the middle of May somewhere. So it'd be the second meeting. So that'd be the sixteenth. Is that right? Yeah. That meeting's available. Do you, I think I can go. Works for to, me. I don't want. I don't want to try to do it in the middle of the budget. Okay. Um, I would request that whatever information is submitted could be submitted a couple of weeks before, since we're getting such ample time. That way, staff has at least time to review it, and that would be correct. I, I see a nod from council. Yes, if, you're, if you would like to set it up, I'm, um, yeah, about two weeks before the, the, the oh. okay. There's written 
uh, information is submitted two weeks prior to that. I, I think that's a good point because otherwise we're going to be in September uh, going back and forth. So uh, actually I would accept a motion. Uh, is, is Did you establish May 16th? Yes, it is a board meeting date. Okay, okay. so the a motion that is being requested is that we continue until uh, May 16th and that any information that um, the applicant wishes to uh, submit to us will be submitted no later than 15 days prior to May 16th, which would have to be May 1st. <laughs> so moved. What? Place and time. Place and time. And for the, you know, what time would you like the hearing? Do you want to set it at 9 o'clock or further? In That's the fine. Meeting? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be fine. 9 o'clock here, room 130. Court, let's say in the courthouse. We never know what might come up. If, if we have a jury trial going on, then, so. It'll be in the Umatilla County Courthouse in Pendleton. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Uh, I, I second. I, I guess I made a motion, <laughs> sort of. Well, one of us, one of the <laughs> three of us. I, I frame it, Bill Mood, and you second. Second. Okay. I'll yeah. favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, anything else? We're adjourned.